this or not, and uh, with some prodding in the last couple of weeks, and the fact that there were some great people out there that that were uh, were being uh, sought after to run, and, and would make great candidates, and uh, but it didn't work out for any of them. And I made a statement here a few months ago that uh, became push came to shove at the at the very last that uh, my 16 years as a county supervisor in Crawford County maybe was long enough. And if it, if it was to be, it, it would be me. And lo and behold, here I am today. But uh, I, I hope you all have a brochure here this morning. Uh, and I prepared a statement, and it, it'll kind of summarize things, and I just want to talk after that. So I'm going to read this quickly, and uh, then I'll just kind of drop into visit mode, and, and we'll talk about a few things. But uh, So I'm announcing today that I will be a candidate for the 6th District uh, State Senate seat in uh, Iowa, and that's a little bigger than what the 26th District used to be. Uh, it now also includes uh, Audubon County, so it's now Buena Vista County, Sac County, Carroll County, and Audubon County, and then eight townships in Crawford County. Uh, the, uh, the Crawford County's uh, four townships high, like every county is, and so it'll just be the two tiers of the two columns of townships on the eastern eastern half of Crawford County, which I live in Vail, Iowa, and have served, uh, like I said, in the, on the Board of Supervisors for, the, for that area for 16 years. So what do I bring to this? Uh, experience on the County Board of Supervisors. I have served on the County Board of Health and understand health issues every county face. And I've served on the Buena Vista, Crawford, and Sac County Early Childhood Empowerment Board. Uh, that was created about 12 years ago by the legislature to, to deal with early childhood issues. And, uh, and I've been, a, 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 I hate to say founding father, but I've sat on that board since it, it's, it was conceived. So I understand how that works and uh, have worked with uh, the three of the counties that are in this district currently. Uh, the motto for that group is every child at beginning of birth will be healthy and successful. And I, I don't think anybody could disagree with that goal. So uh, I've also served eight years uh, on the Wesco Industries Board in, in Denison. Wesco is a sheltered workshop sort of setting and there's over a hundred clients there and they come from seven counties around uh, Denison and, uh, and Crawford County. And again, Carroll County is involved in Wesco Industries. Ottoman County is involved in Wesco Industries. Um, uh, Monona, I, I won't go through the rest of them, but those are the three counties that would be in this district. So I've, I've met a lot of people via that uh, uh, venue. And and I think I understand about as well the mental health issues that the state faces and the concerns of a lot of parents that have uh, uh, mental health uh, uh, children and uh, uh, Crawford has uh, has about a hundred clients in our, in our mental health budget. Sixty of those are are, are utilized through Wesco. They they are in the work uh, study program there. And but the other forty are like most counties are sent all over to uh, centers. Uh, New Hope Village would be one here in Carroll County, and we have several residents there. So. I, I understand how that system works, and uh, I think I could be a, uh, an advocate for that. And it's a it's a big issue, and it's uh, been talked about, and it's currently talked about at the state house uh, okay. on how to redesign that system. Uh, as a county supervisor, I think the system has worked pretty well. We've been blessed in Crawford County with a wonderful director. Uh, they call them CPCs, if you're not aware of that. Uh, but there's there are other counties in the in the state that aren't able to offer the same programs that, that our county would maybe offer, or uh, and don't have the funding. So it's a major issue, and I think uh, I understand it as well as anyone. Um, what else? Uh, uh, I also was involved in a daycare center ten years ago that uh, was built in Crawford County, and and the the reason that thing ever got started was there was a, a USDA Rural Development Grant back then that uh, that would basically pay for half of the facility if, if uh, 
if you went for the grant. And then we, we worked hard to get a matching grant or matching funds through just local donations and were able to raise another $400,000 to help build that facility. And currently it's, uh, has over uh, 200 kids in it and it's used daily and it's full and uh, it's pretty important to the young families in our area. So uh, that's kind of a controversial issue I know. Uh, but seeing it after, after it's completed, it, it does fill a niche and our working families, you understand, both parents are working and, and sometimes that's a vital thing for a community and it does uh, go a long way for economic development with uh, new families moving in. So, um, my wife and I have worked uh, with kids all of, our, all of our lives actually. She was a school teacher at the Arweva school system and I've been a bus driver there for the last 25 years. I've been farming for 40, if I didn't say that. And uh, I'm going to keep farming until I get it right, and, and uh, so I don't plan to stop doing that. I think it's important that we have citizen legislators and not full-time legislators. Although if you look at me and say, "Well, he's pretty much full-time. He's been there 16 years," but uh, I've I farmed all that time, and I and I've worked in the business community, and, and uh, it's important that you keep your ground, your feet grounded in in business because we, we all need. Uh, uh, jobs and, and that's an important issue so um, we have two adult children we have a daughter Martha who lives in Green Bay Wisconsin with our, her husband and my one grandson so who's four years old so I get to see him about four times a year and that's too far away I wish they were in Iowa but uh, Green Bay is kind of like the Holy Land any Green Bay fans here Oh, all right, there we go. <laughs> it's a great community. I, uh, I attended my first tea party rally with my uh, my son-in-law. Is is a I don't know how she could have picked. Well, I can know. I know how she picked uh, a person that would be as conservative as I am, and that's what she picked. This guy is a veterinary, and uh, we went to three years ago or whenever it started we went to a tea party rally there uh, on the Fox River in Green Bay and, and dropped, well I, I think somebody dropped something in the river there. We tried to be politically correct but uh, it's it's a movement that uh, is, is sprung up and I, I think it still exists and I think it will show its face here in the, in the fall elections and, and uh, God willing I hope it does. Uh, we're also, uh, I'm also a member of the Crawford County Cattlemen's Association. Uh, before I ever got into politics, I was on the Cattlemen's Board in my younger years of farming and actually got to the position as president of that association in Crawford County for four years, I think, during the early 80s. And uh, I, it's, it was a great place to meet people. That's sort of what led me down the road to the next step, uh, getting to meet uh, directors from all over your your county is a, is a great step to run for anything, especially for Board of Supervisors. And uh, had I thought about that at the time? No, I didn't think I was going to run for anything at that point. But in 1983, I did run for the county auditor's position. It was also the year I had a farm sale, because uh, if you remember the times of the early 80s, things were, were uh, very bad on the farm, and uh, I had a farm sale. I wasn't going to quit, uh, but I, I sold everything that I could that would uh, satisfy the bank's desires and uh, started up uh, with equipment that uh, was purchased right over there, <laughs> about two miles out of town over here. And we kept going and uh, luckily I had landlords and landladies that were, were good to go and stuck with me and uh, the rest is history. So we farm about 640 acres and that's, uh, that's what we farm for the last four years. We, are, we aren't any bigger than that. I, I do have a son. Also, uh, named Alex, Alex bought 80 acres here a couple years ago, so uh, he currently works in Nevada and lives in Ames, but he comes home for every weekend when it's har uh, planting and harvest time, and uh, he'll be the seventh generation of our family to... Uh,